Hi guys and welcome to episode 6 of ABC. You join us once again here at Stanick Lakes in Northamptonshire. And once again I'm here on Roman Lake. You may remember in the last episode this is where we started but the fish started spawning and instead we moved on to Swan Lake which is a, another lake on the complex just next door. Today temperatures are over 30 degrees. I'm stood sweating in my waders I've got sweat in places I didn't think it was possible to sweat and conditions really are perfect for floater fishing. But we covered that in the last episode. So this time I'd like to cover weed fishing. Now just the very sight or mention of weed tends to strike fear in a lot of anglers. But fear not because this time I'd like to show you that with the right tackle and the right approach you can have great success on weedy waters. So I think the first thing we need to talk about is the tackle and you need to make sure the tackle you're using is up to the job and can safely extract a carp from its weedy home. Now the rods I'm using here today, they're 12 foot 6 inch, 3 and a half pound test curve. They're quite forgiving in the tip but have a lot of power down below. That 3 and a half pound test curve gives me the confidence and I know that should a carp bolt for the weed or become lodged in a weed bed there's the power there to get the fish moving again and enable me to steer the fish to safety. Now coupling the rods I'm using the EOS 12,000 reels and they are loaded with 23 pound XSS. It may seem excessive using a 23 pound line but this is a line I actually use for the vast majority of my fishing situations and it has a diameter of 0.40 mil so that's the same as most of the 15 pound lines on the market. So really it's, it's kind of like a 15 pound line but with a braking strain of 23 pound. It's also incredibly invisible in water and a lot of weedy venues do tend to be of, of a clearer water clarity. So by using a, a really invisible main line it's less detectable by the carp. Also it has superb abrasion resistant qualities. If you look at a lot of weed in the lake, it isn't soft and fluffy, it's often quite coarse and abrasive. And it can also contain things such as mussels, which again are quite sharp. So by using the 23 pound highly abrasion resistant line, I know no matter how weedy the situation, it's gonna massively improve my chances of landing whatever I hook. So as you can probably tell, the rods are actually in play at the moment, and there are a few carp in this area. So right now I'm going to put on a bit more sun cream and then I'm going to show you a little bit more about the tactics that I'm currently using. So we've taken a look at the hardware but now let's take a look at the finer details, the rigs and presentations that I use and also when and why. So for me, I guess there are two main weed fishing approaches. The first one is a solid PVA bag approach. Now I use this presentation when fishing in small holes in the weed, but where beneath the weed, the actual lake bed is relatively clear. So, in these situations, if I was to fish with a, uh, an unprotected rig, if you like, 
there's a chance that the hook could get caught up on some weed as it goes down to the bottom. But by encasing it in a solid PVA bag, the hook and all the rig components are protected. That way it can make it down to the lake bed without any weed or debris catching over the hook points and hindering the hooking potential of the rig. Now in these situations where the lake bed is clear beneath the weed, I would always look to fish with a bottom bait or a wafter hook bait. Where it is clear, I don't want a really obvious blatant pop up there kind of hovering around off the lake bed when the lake bed itself is, is clean and weed free. So I would fish with a wafter hook bait presented on a short braided rig exactly like the one I have here. And this is the solid PVA bag rig that I've used on a um, previous episode of ABC where we covered solid PVA bag tactics. The hook link here, that's made of 25 pound reflex braid. Coming down, I have a size four curved short hook. And in this instance, I'm using a tungsten flipper over the eye to improve the hooking properties of the rig. I have a rig ring, which is tied level with the barb. That creates a, a blowback effect. And the hook bait here is a Pacific tuner. It's a special wafter hook bait that I've had rolled for me. So yeah, that is the setup I use for my solid PVA bag fishing. Very strong components, 25 pound braid. The curved shorts are very strong hooks and it just gives me lots of extra security when playing fish in weedy situations. Now, the other presentation I use is when I'm fishing on or in the weed itself, where there isn't a clean lake bed. And in these situations, I fish with a pop-up presentation and my preferred way of presenting them is on a hinge stiff rig. So this is my variation of the hinge stiff rig. It's tied using doubled over 30 pound rigidity. It's a very, very stiff material. And when it's doubled over, it almost acts like wire. And what it in essence creates is an extension of the hook. So it's a bit like fishing with a big hook. Um, and the hooking properties, the mechanics of this rig are absolutely superb. Here I'm only using a fairly short length, about an inch and a half, but the height would depend on the, the, the density or the height of the weed that I'm fishing over. In this instance, it's only fairly light weed, so I can get away with fishing an inch and a half pop-up. Um, in, in heavier weed, then I'd, I'd happily fish with it with a four inch pop-up. So the length of the boom section would vary depending on the height of the weed I'm fishing over, but we'll cover this in a bit more detail a little bit later on. Well, this just isn't happening here at all. It's been such a hot day today. And there aren't that many carp in the area anymore. There's a few fish drifting in and out, but certainly not in any numbers. So I'm gonna reel in the rods and I'm gonna get on the move and see if we can find some carp elsewhere. Well, today has been an absolute grueler. It's been so hot, it's made everything such hard work. But I've just uh, moved swims. I've moved about 200 yards down the bank. And I'm kind of in the entrance to the arm that I was fishing, but I can also command like the main body of the lake as well. I have seen a few fish here. It's just been too hot today for them fish to really drop down and have a feed. But I do have quite a bit of weed in front of me, an area of shallow water. I've also got the reed fringe margin off to the right and I've seen a few fish moving down that margin so it's looking promising there's fish in the area what I'm going to do now I'm going to have a few casts around with a lead just to see the extent of the weed and see what tactics I need to be employing and then we can get some rods in and hopefully turn this session around So here we are in the new swim and there are quite a few carp in the area but there is quite a lot of weed here too so I want to try and find a few likely looking areas that I think the carp are going to visit. So all I've got here is just a bare lead and that's on my uh, spot rod and I'm just going to feel it down to lake bed and kind of use the rod as an extension of my hands to discover a little bit more about what's beneath the surface. 
So here we are in the newsroom and I can already see there's quite a few carp in the area. There is quite a lot of weed here though, I can see that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make a few casts with a bare lead just to explore a little bit more and try and build up a better understanding of what it's like beneath the surface. Um, I'm not going to thrash the water to a form, I want to make as few a cast as possible as not to spook any carp in the area. So I'm just waiting for some fish to just pass me by now, they're just sort of going, just kind of going away, so now we can make a, a cast. So the fish have been moving just probably within this, well within 20 yards of the bank. There's quite a big bank of weed here. So well, that's pretty thick weed. Um, as the lead, as I was feeling lead down, it was sort of stopping and starting where it was kind of going through the weed, then getting caught on the weed. So yeah, that's and it's I didn't even feel the lead touch the bottom, so that is just in weed. I'm gonna go a tiny bit further, just a tiny bit. Again, that's also, I could feel that falling through weed before it eventually landed on the bottom. Um, but if this is where the fish are, then this is where I will fish. I know quite a lot of the time I'll see people will find the fish and the fish might be sat in weed, but they'll look for a clear area as close to where the fish are as possible. So they might find the fish sat in a weed bed, but end up fishing 10, 15 yards away or, or further where it's nice and clear. Well, the fish aren't in that clear area. The fish are in the weed. They're there because they feel safe. They have lots of food close by with natural food items. That is where they want to be. So if that's where they want to be, then that's where you should fish. I'm just going to make one more cast a little bit to the right to see if we have got a clear spot. That went down really nice, really, really nice. I mean, I've, I've cast these three casts kind of within a, huh, not much bigger than a, a bin lid. So just in the space of two foot that way or two foot this way, we've got thick weed, thin weed, and a little tiny bit to the right, it goes down with a nice thud. So that would be a great spot to present a bait. Um, if it was all weed there, then I'd be fishing with a hinge stiff rig. If it was all weed and that's where the fish are, then I'll just fish in the weed. But the fact that it's, it's so weedy and there's this one spot that's clear, that to me suggests that it's clear maybe because the carp have fed there and that's where I want to put a rig. Okay, so I'm having a slight change of plan. <laughs> Although I found that clear spot down there, I actually found one which I think is even better, a little bit more round the corner to the right near this overhanging tree. There's um, some real thick weed down there, but there's a really small bucket lid size hole where the lead goes down with a nice crack. That's got to have been created by feeding fish. So my right hand rod is now gonna go down there. So I'm now gonna look for a spot a little bit further into the lake. This morning when I was here, I did see quite a lot of activity, probably 40, 50 yard range and I want to have a little bit of an explore to see why the fish were wanting to be there. Have a few casts, see what the weed situation is like. Okay, so I've just had a cast there, probably about 50 yard range. And the lead went down nice and firm. I'm hitting weed now though. So, although the lead has gone down firm, if there was a thin layer of weed on there, then I would still feel the lead land firm and I would pull the lead and it'd come back through the weed and you wouldn't know anything about it. You wouldn't know that there was weed actually there. So what I'm gonna do because there is a lot of weed in that surrounding area, I'm going to swap the, the distance lead that I'm casting around with and instead attach a grappling lead. Okay. 
Now, if there is any weed down there, I'm just pulling it back gently along the lake bed. So if there is any weed down there, it'll stick on the prongs on the lead. I'm just going to try and get it over this weed, otherwise it is going to catch. Oh, okay. So that's, that's a really clear area and surrounding it is a big weed bed. So that could explain why there was so much carpet activity there this morning. Maybe it is a feeding area that's been kept clear of weed. So I've just had a few more casts around with a bare lead on that spot that's about 45 yards in front of the swim. And it turns out it's actually quite a narrow clear strip in between two dense weed beds. It's probably about, probably about a rod length long, but only half a rod length wide. So it's a narrow channel in between two banks of weed and I think that's a great place to put a bait. So I have now left the line in the clip after we found that spot out there and I'm now going to introduce a little bit of bait. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take off the lead, put on a spawn and get some bait out there. So this is the mix that I'm going to introduce. It's a really, really simple mix. I've got some Pacific Tuna and Odyssey Boilies in various different sizes, and most of them are crumbed up to more or less either chops or dust. Uh, in fact, the only sort of whole baits I've got in there are some 10 mil Boilies. Most of it is just little bits, as you can see. It's very sort of powdery in the mix. And the reason I like this is it comes to rest above any weed. If I was just to put in whole boilies, uh, then they could fall through the weed and almost be out of view. So here I have the, the mixture of boilies. I've also got some oily bag mix in there as well, which has lots of tiny two mil pellets and also powders. And I've also got some, some four mil and six mil pellets in there too. So yeah, lots of light ingredients that will come to rest above the weed, making it very visual for any passing carp. So I'm just going to put maybe 10 midi spoms of bait out there. Not a lot, just enough to uh, hopefully try and tempt a bite. Well, good morning, um, nothing to report, unfortunately. And I was so confident last night, I found two great spots. I found that open water spot, that narrow uh, strip in between two weed beds, and I found a great spot down the right hand margin. Um, just a small clear area in amongst the weed. And I'd seen so many fish there as well yesterday. I was so confident one of those spots would produce, but nothing's happened at all so i'm feeling a little bit deflated if i'm honest because time is running out there's only a few hours left of this session and i know it isn't a challenge or anything but i don't want to blank that that would that would just be <laughs> um so i'm gonna have to have a bit of a rethink if i'm gonna turn this session around my next plan is to reel these rods in last night before it got dark and before I got these rods set, I did actually bait a few areas in the margins in small holes in the weed. And I'm hoping some of those spots have been visited by carp, some have been fed on. Um, but yeah, today's gonna be a bit of a, a mobile approach, dropping a rig in a spot where the carp are visiting and hopefully, hopefully I can save a blank that way. Where have you been? Oh, I've been shouting you for about 10 minutes. Other side of the lake. Beating your ass. <sighs> I've got one. I've got one. <laughs> oh man. I'm so relieved. 
it's not a bad one. So yeah, you've missed all the action. So <laughs> I, um, I've just realized how lucky I am. I can just see the hook out in the net as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, you've missed all the action. I um, saw a bit of, the, well, the reeds knocking. I wouldn't say feeding fish. Saw a few of the reeds knocking just round the corner here. So I waded out, dropped a rig in place. It was in the water maybe 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. And eventually it just, it just ripped off. I can't believe I've got one. I can't believe I've got one. Oh, it was amazing. Absolutely incredible fight. There's the rig. Yeah, it's pretty weedy. Somewhere in there, there's a rig. I can grab it. That's the, the setup that I used. I ended up switching to a hinge stiff rig because I was fishing over light weed. There wasn't a clear spot there. I just noticed that the reeds were knocking. And like I mentioned yesterday, you fish where the fish are. And it wasn't clear, it was just light weed. So I've just waded out, lowered in a hinge stiff rig, handful of, of that spod mix over the top. 15, 20 minutes later, I've had the bite. That's amazing. And yeah, we've got a, a bit of weed in there as well. Well, I really didn't think it was gonna happen on this session. So you can imagine how relieved I feel right now. So I'm just gonna secure the landing net in place in the carpiest way possible. Like that. Then we'll get the unhooking mat wet and ready. Then we'll take a closer look at him. Yes. <laughs> So here we have a long, lean, blank saving common of 26 and a half pound. And it really does just go to show if things aren't happening, then go and make them happen. I reeled in the rods, found fish showing down that reed fringe, reed fringe margin. I'm down. And if you're seeing fish showing in the weed, then that's where you need to be fishing for them. There was no clear spots down there, just light weed. So I presented a hinge stiff rig over the top 20 minutes later, it rattled off with this. I'm absolutely buzzing. I really thought this session was going to end in a blank. <sighs> Well, so far we've talked about the hardware and also the rigs I like to use, but there's one other really important factor that I'd like to cover, and that is the lead arrangement. When fishing in weed, it really is important that the lead can discharge easily and safely. If not, that lead can almost act like an anchor and weed can gather around the lead, making it much, much harder to play and land fish safely. Also, when the lead is discharged on the take, quite often the fish will rise up in the water. That way you can play the fish above any weed that may be below. Now there are two main lead setups that I use when fishing in weed. The first is a simple lead clip arrangement. That's what I use when I'm fishing my hinge stiff rig. Now I know this may have come as a bit of a surprise. I think a lot of you may have expected me to say a helicopter setup, and that does seem to be very much in fashion at the moment. For me, fishing with a naked helicopter setup or a chod allows the fish too much free movement before it feels the weight of the lead. And I used to use choddies almost exclusively when fishing in weed. I was getting so many indications on the bobbins, on the alarms, that I couldn't put down to liners. 
double beeps, triple beeps, just little tiny indications. And I was convinced the fish were just getting away with it. They had too much movement with very little resistance. And when I made the change over to a, a lead clip setup and lengthened the boom on the hinge diff rig, all these double, triple beeps stopped. And instead I was getting full blown takes, proper runs. So I was convinced that the fish were able to pick up the, the hook bait, not have any resistance and were able to eject the hook bait without actually getting hooked. So this is the exact rig that I used to catch that 26 pounder. And it's a hinge stiff rig fished on a lead clip setup. Um, the tail rubber is only just pushed on, so the lead can discharge very, very easily. There was a lot of thick weed around where I was fishing, and if I'd been playing the fish with that lead still attached, that would have just acted like an anchor. I'd have had a big ball of weed around, around the lead clip arrangement, and that would have also taken a lot of pressure off the hook point, the hook hold. It would have made landing the fish much more difficult. It would have been harder to get the fish's head up and net the fish safely. So yeah, it really is important to lose the lead on the take. You'll notice here, I'm fishing with a naked mainline and wherever fishery rules state that you don't have to use tubing, I would always fish with a naked mainline, especially in weed. The more components you have, the more it is for weed to gather around. So it really is important to streamline the setup as much as possible. Also, if I was using tubing in the weed, what you tend to find is if the fish should dart in the weed, the tubing often tends to pull out of the tail rubber and slides up the main line. So it's almost redundant anyway. And what you end up with is rig tubing up the line with weed gathering around it, just making things much more difficult. So we have a four ounce lead on a camo edges lead clip. Then we have a fairly short boom of 25 pound Camatex soft. I could feel the lead land on the bottom. I could feel it touch down on the bottom, but I was fishing over light weed. The weed itself was probably only four inches off the deck. So I chose to fish with a seven inch boom. If the weed happened to be a foot off the bottom, then I would have fished with a probably a 15, 16 inch boom. That way the lead can fall through the weed whilst the hook bait is still presented above. The lead isn't dragging the hook bait into the weed itself, compromising presentation. And that was the hook bait that did the business. It's a, just a white carp freaks pop-up, presented inch and a half off the bottom, just on a light layer of weed. And it really did get me out of jail on this occasion. So this is the other lead arrangement that I use, and this is for when I'm fishing with solid PVA bags. And as you'd expect, it's an inline setup, but this is set to fish drop-off style. I'm using the Edges inline drop-off kit. That way, when I get a take, the lead is discharged easily, making it much more streamlined and easier to play and land the carp in the weed. Again, you'll notice I'm fishing with a naked main line, Short section of 25 pound reflex braid, size four, short curved hook with a tungsten flipper over the eye to improve the hooking, a small rig ring to create a blowback effect, and the hook bait is a, a tuna uh, wafter. So those are the two setups that I use when fishing in weed. Both very different presentations, both for very different situations. One for fishing in small holes in the weed, and one for fishing over the weed itself. Well, that's it for this session and for this episode of ABC. It has been very, very tough going, but ultimately very rewarding. Catching that carp right at the death, saving a blank, yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. And I hope you've picked up lots of tips and tactics to help you fish in weedy waters. And I hope it's given you the confidence to fish in and around weed. But before we go, I need to announce the winner from last month's competition. I asked you, what was the main line I used during that floater fishing session? And the answer, of course, was 12 pound surface. And the winner that I picked from all the correct answers purely at random was 
Ben Dickinson. So well done, Ben. You have won the bits to recreate the setup that I used in last month's episode. Please either contact me via my Instagram page or Facebook page with your details and we'll get them out to you ASAP. But before we sign off, it's time for this month's competition. And all you have to do to stand a chance of winning the Edges rig bits to recreate the rigs used in this episode is simply like this video, subscribe to my channel and tell me in the comments section below how big was the carp I caught in this episode. And next month I will pick a winner purely at random from all the correct answers. So until then guys, stay carpy and I'll see you next time.